Hello, my name is Chris Cranfilm, Vice President of Business Development at Cloud One Corporation. I have a short video blog that I want to go through on performance testing in the cloud and total cost of ownership. In any computing project, it's important to perform a full analysis of all the costs and benefits before making decisions to begin a project, migrate a system, or even make a purchase. Since the emergence of the intersection between cloud computing and software as a service, Many organizations are evaluating one or both of these models for reduction in cost and increase in simplicity of their environment. This short video blog includes a high-level description of a model pioneered by the Yankee Group for making such calculations, and it applies it to the decisions around performance testing within the software factory. As in any TCO analysis, there are cost components that must be taken account of. In her landmark research document, Understanding the Total Cost of Ownership of a Hosted versus Premises-Based CRM Solution, Yankee Group researcher Cheryl Clingstone laid out a series of components that should be considered as part of any TCO analysis that include cloud versus on-premise hosting of a workload. These com com components include software, software maintenance, hardware, backup hardware, hardware support, operating system software, network, backup power, installation IT support, ongoing IT support. These categories are very important to take into account. At a high level, the software is just that, the software cost. In the traditional model, you buy a license to the current release of the software that you desire, and you own the right to that version, and only that version indefinitely. This is sometimes called perpetual licensing. Upgrades and updates to the software are usually included as a separate category called maintenance, and it's an ongoing support for the product beyond that initial period. In the software as a service model, however, licenses are procured as needed and rented only for a period of time, like one month, two months, six months, one year, whatever is appropriate for the customer, and generally support and maintenance can be included within that monthly charge. Software maintenance is a second category. This is an additional charge that usually buys you the rights to upgrades and patches for the perpetual licenses. Sometimes these maintenance costs include support for the software through web or phone and sometimes they don't. Generally the cost is some percentage of that original license cost. The next category is hardware. In the traditional model, of course, it requires you to purchase hardware or lease hardware as appropriate to run your software. Often this can be multiple servers, for example, one for a database, one for a web server. But when calculating the total cost of ownership for an on-premise installation, it's very appropriate to use a three-year straight-line depreciation to account for the value and the need to refresh that hardware periodically. In software as a service, however, these costs are usually contained within the hosting charge of that monthly rental price. Backup hardware is the next category. For any critical application, it's important to have a hot swap standby server that's ready to continue the work if it's needed. Although in the traditional premise model, this can provide a high level of confidence in the reliability environment, it often falls short of the dynamic redirection, replication, and work shifting that a cloud hosted environment provides. Hardware support is the next category. Most server manufacturers charge a fee to provide support service and repairs for that hardware. And like software, this is generally a percentage of the original cost of that hardware. The cost applies to both the primary and backup servers. Like the server, in the SaaS model, or software as a service, this generally contains these support costs within the hosting monthly rental charge. Operating system software is the next category. There is a cost component for the operating system, obviously, for both the OS on the primary and the backup machines. But again, in the SaaS model, these costs are usually contained in the monthly rental price. Network. As with any server introduced in the infrastructure, there is some amount of network reconfiguration and bandwidth cost. However, if the software is intended for the users outside the organization, then you move into mobile users that are connecting from disparate locations. These costs need to be included as well. From a cloud SaaS standpoint, you, we incur these costs as well, but often include them in the hosting price, provide them as a one-time connection charge for the setup. I won't go through the rest of the categories, but you see where I'm going with this. The first is in the perpetual model 
the costs that are included, and the SAS model, you notice the trend here, these are included in the monthly rental cost of the software. So let's go through our two examples, on-premise versus cloud-hosted. Let's use the example of Rational Performance Tester, sized at 5,000 virtual users. For the on-premise model, a virtual user is a simulated user of a website, which is programmed by a tester to run a specific script of actions, which either vary little or a lot or not even at all. It is the primary tool available for software developers for uncovering performance bottlenecks and latent software bugs that affect the ability of the system to support a desired workload. In our on-premise model, the total cost is $203,962. That incorporates, again, these categories, the software license, the servers, the backup hardware, etc. For the software as a service model, our total is $68,000. $858. A huge difference. Again, this includes the monthly rental price for the software, monthly rental price for cloud hosting of the hardware, the backup support, etc., the same categories. So, it's very evident from the information I've just described in this video blog. As you go through the details, there is a significant cost savings in the cloud SaaS model over an on-premise. To summarize, on-premise, $203,962. Cloud SaaS, $68,858. Total cost savings, $135,104. But more importantly, this analysis does not account for certain other intangible benefits that the Cloud SaaS model provides. For example, because you provision users on demand, you don't need to purchase any infrastructure up front. You can start small and grow as the project portfolio grows, and then reduce your costs to zero if no active testing is needed. So you truly pay for what you use. Secondly, generally a cloud SaaS infrastructure can be configured very quickly and sometimes instantaneously. This can be of value for fast-moving, agile development projects. Finally, there is little to no opportunity for shelfware as at what we see in the perpetual model. In the cloud SaaS infrastructure, you don't have to deal with that. You don't have to deal with being out of compliance with a capacity-based license agreement. There's no need to purchase licenses of software up front that might sit unused, and if additional users are needed, beyond the anticipated original scope, they can be generally added with little fanfare and without penalty. So as with any TCO analysis, it's important to consider all custom factors that govern your situation. These are likely other costs that should be considered and ones that are non-existent in your environment. However, it's likely that the powerful mechanisms of buying on demand will result in significant cost savings for your company. And one of the many reasons that's driving the shift to, to cloud and software as a service across the IT industry. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.